Hello everyone, Sandy here. Welcome to day eight of my 13 frights before Halloween. It is October the 25th and we're ready to continue working on some of these pages. I've already got the papers picked out and um, inked so we can get right to it. And then I remembered that I had this cute little pack of ephemera from Simple Stories. It doesn't go with this paper line, but I really like the little cut aparts, little cutouts in this package. So I want to start using these and then probably will backtrack some on some of my pages and add some of these to the pages I've already done because it's, they're, just, they're just really cute. I like these kind of packs. This one has, it's called Frankie and Friends Bits and Pieces. Um, I don't know how many is in there, but there's, oh, it says 50 cardstock die cuts, ephemera bits and pieces. So it's all for Halloween, so it's really, really cute. So we're going to use some of that. So I've pre-cut some of the papers, and I'm ready to get going on this. Um, let's see here. Let me think a minute. The first thing that I want to do is on this page, I don't have a um, shaped paper to use for this, so I've made my own. I actually used a die in my Big Shot, a Sizzix die. And so this is the way it looked originally. You see that? And then I just cut the edge off. I cut a large one out of black and then two smaller ones out of uh, patterned paper and I've inked them. And I also cut a four inch hinge because this is four inches here and then I tapered the ends. So I made a hinge here. Let me get my score tape and I'm going to go ahead and put score tape on the hinge. And I probably should have put it on there before I uh, cut the tapered the ends but that's okay, I'm going to make this work just the same. Here we go. So I'm adding an attachment to this, this little hinge. So I want it to hinge this away, so I'm going to put this hinge down. Let me make sure I'm in the frame here. On this side here, along the cut straight edge. And then when I attach this down on this page, it's going to flip back like that. So let me make sure none of the glue is sticking out where it caused a problem. And take the backing off the other side. And then I'm going to go ahead and stick this down on the edge, cut ed edge of the page. So now we've added this flap. Let me rub some of this glue off here on the edge of the hinge here. Get all that off. Now then, the first paper we're going to put down is I cut this one out and it measures, grab a ruler here, five and three eighths tall, as all of them have been, and this one is three and three eighths wide. So we've got the ATG gun. This really helps to uh, mat these pages really quick. This one ran out. Don't worry, I have two ATG guns. <laughs> Always have one ready to go. Just need to wind that one up a little bit. There we go. Okay, let's put this down here. And then we're going to pattern the cutout flap. Now, I don't think I'm going to um, mat this, uh, use a, a magnet on this. I'm just going to kind of leave this one loose. So, on the inside is where I want the graph looking side of the paper. This ATG gun doesn't want to wind correctly for me. Needed to be used a little bit. Let's see here. So we're going to stick this on, and I used a smaller Sizzix die of the same pattern for this. Then this one closes, and on this side we're going to have the little orange piece with "Smell My Feet." I think that's really cute. Look at that here.
the video off right quick. My husband was yelling at me that my movie was on. Actually, he was just teasing me. It's 2001 Space Odyssey. I cannot watch that movie. I've tried probably ten times at least. And every time I fall sound asleep. So, no, I don't even attempt to watch that movie. So I've got this piece of glittery ribbon that I really like. And I'm going to put some score tape. Let's see. I'll find my quarter inch. Put some score tape right along this V part on the back side here. That's where I'm going to run the glue. I mean, not the glue, but the ribbon. So I'll take this off. And center this. So we've got two tails on each side. Like this. Stick that down, bring this around, and then I'm just going to tie this. Make it into a knot. And then I'm just going to trim the ends. turn a little bit so that the glitter part is showing on that tail. Mm -hmm. Oh, the glitter's coming off. That's the glitter. Okay, let me turn this one down some more. Something like that. So, and look and see what we've got in here that we could add. This little ghost is kind of cute. And the inside here. So I think I'm going to use glue. I'm going to use some art designer art glitter. It dries clear and I'm going to add some onto the ghost because it's shaped so I want to make sure that all the little arms and things stick. And attach it down here. Sort of at the bottom. Like that, let that dry. And I think I'm going to leave this page just with the pattern paper. So this is a good place for photos. And then we'll flip this over. And I'm thinking, I think I may just leave this one for now without anything else on it, unless I find some kind of three dimensional thing I want to put on there. So we're just going to turn that. So the next page is a continuance of this one going to be this and it's the same size five and three quarters by three and three quarters and I'm going to attach this down with the ATG gun put the glue out of the way and put the cap back on it And this one's going to stay solid also. Um, the trick or treat. It's a little wide. That would be cute there. Do not enter. Okay, I think I'm going to ink the do not enter. Just a little bit on the fence post, the sides. And then I'm going to glue it, the bottom, just on the bottom feet of the fence post. And then a little bit on the flag, like right here. And this is to make it, uh, if I decide to put a tag or something in it, we could do that. So it's going to be loose, open at the top so that we can stick something down in there. And if we choose, we could even stick one of these. Like that. What else have we got? got? Any other characters? 
Oops, it's getting all over my stuff here. here. It's cute. I'm going to ink him up and just stick him in there and I'm not going to attach him down. He's going to be loose for right now in case I change my mind. Add a little bit of ink. We're going to put him in there like do not enter. He's just coming out the top there. So that's kind of cute. Now for the next part is that little um, pocket thing that I made instead of use at a cardstock instead of using a little paper bag. And for this one, I took my Martha Stewart running blood, I guess that's what you would call it, punch. And I just punched it here on the edge. So the first piece of paper I'm putting down is this little stripe. And it's two and three quarters by three and a quarter tall. I'll stick that down right quick. here. Now I know the black doesn't look like blood, but I just think it's eerie looking like maybe fog or something. Um, did I cut a piece of paper for this back side or not? Maybe not. I'll have to backtrack some. Okay, so next I have this piece here. So this is wider. This is on the pocket part. It's two, two and one eighth wide by three and a quarter tall. going here. Make sure you can still see what I'm doing. And then flip this over and this stripe piece goes here. It's the same size. Two and an eighth wide by three and a quarter tall. Tape runner ATG gun is not being happy. This is probably my older one that I always said I was going to get rid of. But then I find myself still using it. So I'll put this one in the back. need one here. I really thought that I cut one, but that's a misplaced. So I'm going to turn the camera off and grab some paper and cut that one. Okay, and I cut this one. I decided to use the graph paper look. It's uh, one and a half wide by three and a quarter tall. See how that black shows up against the, the dot there? And then the next piece is this one here for this pocket piece. So this one, I'm going to use some more of the orange with the trick-or-treaters. And it is five and five and five eighths by two inches. And then inside the pocket, I cut this one five and five eighths by two, and I rounded the corners to match the pocket, and I want to just put adhesive on it and slide that in. I 
I have to pull it out a little bit. I didn't get it quite straight as I wanted it. There we go. So on the back side, we need a wider piece. And I'm going to use the bats. So this one is five and three quarters by three inch. And I rounded the two corners. And that goes right there. Okay, getting a lot pattern today. I have this little flap in here. I have the orange trick-or-treaters again, and this one is two and a half wide by three inches tall, rounded the two corners. Flip that over, and then I have these tickets I cut out, same size, two and a half wide by three inches tall, and the corners on one side is rounded. So if you round the corners of a flap or a page, then you need to do the same usually on your pattern paper, at least rather I like to, kind of finishes it off like this. There's that. And I have one more paper cut out. <clears throat> so we're almost got all the pages patterned and then we'll decorate, but let's get this one done. So this was a full page, three and three quarters wide by five and three quarters tall. Okay, we just have one side to pattern as far as pages go, so let me check and see if I pre-cut anything for that. I'll be right back. I got this newsprint paper with the, the large dots on the back, but I'm going to use the newsprint part, and it's five and three quarters tall by three and three quarters wide. So this will be the last page that needs pattern, but we need to add some decorating to them. And then tomorrow we'll finish up this, and then we'll see if we have time to do the front. So that will give us more days to do the box. So, but for now, let me so let's look over this and see how we want to do some decorating. So we've got the ghost stuck there, and uh, got this cakewalk. Thing. Kind of wanted to maybe add that in there. I need to straighten this up just a little bit on the line. Re-ink that. So I was thinking about maybe letting it stick out some and attach with this little bee. Um, like paper tape, washi tape. I haven't used this yet, so I don't know how sticky it is. Open, slide it out or open it. How does it come out? There we go. It's kind of on a dispenser thing. Oh, it was on a dispenser thing. Oops. Oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> I didn't know that. I don't know how well it holds. Some washi tape's really sticky and holds really well. And then there are those that do not. So this is experimental. If it doesn't work, then I will take it out and use a hinge instead. So I'm going to put this up at the top. And you know when you do this, you don't have to do it straight. So I'm going to kind of maybe tear a jagged edge. 
stick it down and then put it along the line like that. This may stick fine, let's see. I'm going to tear some off here. Now I do notice that I need to not go beyond the height of this little piece here. So these need to be trimmed down some. Get started and rip, whoops, rip it like that. So that looks kind of cool. I like that. That was quick and easy to attach an attachment. And this seems like pretty good sticky stuff. So yeah, the next one that I open, I won't tear up my little dispenser. I will get it a little better. So we got that in. So let's go back over here. So we have this. I need to decide about if I want to put, add something there. Got the ghost. Do we want anything else in there with that? I got some little tombstones and stuff. And some spider webs. Spider webs kind of cute. So these I'm going to have to use glue. So I'm going to add some glue here. This glue dries clear because I clearly made a mess with that one sticking out. I cut that one off some. So we've got that there. Leave that one. I had two to stick together, I would. Let's see. I got this little Frankenstein here. He's kind of cute. I'm just going to put him on there. I'm going to ink him up some. I didn't ink the spider web up. Probably should have. I'm going to look for something. I'll be right back. I was looking to see if I had any Halloween colored paper clips. I do love to use paper clips in uh, my little projects, mini albums. But I found green and purple, and I think that'll work work good. So I didn't have any orange and black ones. I guess I forgot to buy them this year. So I'm just going to stick this little spooky card right there with the paper clip. So we have a paper clip on the other side. We want to stick something under there. Oh, we got candy. We could add spooky and candy together. Or maybe do it on this other side. And ink that up. Now we have a pocket there. We have a couple of pockets, so we're going to need to um, add some photo mats or things like that. So let's do purple with this one. So I've got a pocket here. Let's find some cardstock. This will see so you know why this is. So that width, that's a scrap of cardstock. So it is three and a quarter wide, and I'm gonna cut it down. I'm cutting it down to about it's um, measures six inches. So that's too long. I'm gonna cut it down to four. Then, and Jesus, stick that still too far. I don't want that. Put down a little more. So let's put down to three and see how that looks. We've got three. Okay, I like that better. And then I'm going to take this spooky, bloody, running blood punch going to punch these. So you put this in, center this, and punch the center. 
So you've got that part, and then you pull it out and you realign it to the picture that's on the base and punch this side. And then we do the same thing here, on the other side, and we punch that. So there we got that. So that's going to go in there and probably need a little piece of paper that will go on it. So that sticks out like that. So I need a piece of paper that's three inches by, I'll go with three by two. Three, three by two. Oh, look what I have a scrap. It's going to work. Three by two. Always keep a little over two. That works anyway. Always keep your scraps because you never know when one is just the perfect size and you don't have to cut up a whole piece of paper. So now we're going to do this. And I'm only going to put paper on one side of this tag. So one side will be left black will work good for pictures or something you want to add. So this is going to slide right in here like that. So that gives it that layered look there. You know what? This little, I'm kind of picky. I'm already glued him down. I can't move him. Never mind. I was going to scoot him over a little bit because, but now I remember he wasn't a sticker. He was actually glued. Oops. Okay that back in there. See he kind of shows there a little bit, but that's not too bad. I would have liked it better if he, I should have thought of that. And then I may put a strip of paper there or something. Let's see what else we got to um, bring that together look like he's hiding behind a strip like that of smaller. So this would need to be three inches. I'm going to cut it down a little bit. Three inches tall. I don't want it that wide. I don't want it like I decided on this little tombstone and this little jack-o'-lantern that I cut out of this because it's too wide for the book. So I may cut that down somehow and use it somewhere. So I'm inking up my jack-o'-lantern. Then I'm going to layer this. So let's see how we can do this here. I want this tombstone here first. Okay, I like that. So that folds down there and then that opens up. We have this little seam and then we have this little pocket here. So we need a card in there. So that will work in there, but I want to mat it with some paper to make it a little thicker. So I think I'll use just cardstock. So I'm going to ink the edges first. And what this says is, Happy Halloween Ghost and Goblins, kind of like an eye chart. So, I'm going to glue this on some cardstock. I just want it barely edged. So, I'm going to cut, use my big Tim Holtz scissors and just cut this out. That outline it gives it makes it more stable, more like a card. So that goes in there. 
comes through behind there and that flips up. And then we've got this stuck on here. This I think will leave this way. And I need to make a card or booklet to go in this. I've done a few things here. Let me show you. Let's see what we've done. So we've got that. I've added this with the photo mat. This, this the um, arrow on it. That's a pocket. I haven't done anything here. Jack lanterns here. These two I'm left plain. Now this is something different, but let's back up to here. So as I keep turning my pages, this album kept falling out. So what I did is I pulled it off, the, the backing off, and tightened the ribbon. And then this was a longer booklet, like this. I just cut it in half. Decided it needed to be thinner. I placed a magnet underneath this piece here, a little button magnet. Put one here on this page and then added this costume ledger piece and slide this in. So it not only does the belly band hold it, but the magnet helps to keep it from flopping around. So, then I also added on the back of this flap these spooky eyeballs and this little arrow that says eek. So I added that in that part. And this doesn't stay where it's supposed to either. So I'm trying to decide what to do with this one. It just doesn't quite the bread doesn't stay tight enough. But it may be okay once I get pictures and stuff in there. Um, so yeah, this little booklet. So I added a magnet, a large magnet, underneath the jack-o'-lantern here, and then one underneath the bat paper. And so that will stick there like that. So we have this little booklet that we can pull off and just stick it on like that. So I haven't decided if I want to put a belly band on there, but I don't think so. I think I'm just going to let the magnet hang there and let it move around, so that's okay. So I think for right now, that's all I'm doing to the pages right now. If I add any more decorating, I will share that in the next video, because this one's getting kind of long. And we need to do this inside piece here, and then we'll decorate the outside at a ribbon or closure piece and yeah we'll be almost done with this little album so check back tomorrow for another 13 frights before halloween bye bye